something's wrong here. Wanda, can you hear me? Who's doing this to you? WandaVision is a mystery sort of wrapped in an enigma with all these little reveals and, and you really want each episode to like, like oh, I need to know what's going on, you know? I'm kind of wondering like if there are things that, uh, you know, if I go back on a second viewing, will, will it reward multiple viewings and I'll realize, oh shit, that was that. I would hope so. Yeah, I think all great television and movies have that feeling that when you watch it a second time, you you go deeper, you learn more, you see more. Um, and I think also, you know, that's part of uh, the conclusion of something feeling satisfying is that when you get to the end, you're surprised, but it also feels inevitable that it feels like, oh, all of these things were building blocks and they were getting me to this final moment. One thing I really loved were all the nods to, to classic TV. And I know that you guys like did research and you showed episodes of certain shows. Like what were you showing specifically? We looked at a lot of different things. You know, we, we jumped through a lot of eras. And so we looked at shows that all felt like they had timeless power, like Dick Van Dyke show, I Love Lucy, Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, Brady Bunch, All in the Family, you name it, all the shows that we still love to watch today, that they're they're timeless. Um, and we took a deep dive and studied how performance styles change. And, and the actors and I got together and we had a boot camp where we watched lots of stuff and we tried on, you know, different styles and played around. But Production design helps that tremendously. Costume design, cinematography. We were checking out palettes to make sure that our our 70s red was the exact right red, you know, which is important when you have a red vision in the show. And so there's a lot that we had to you know, sort of keep our eye on, but it was really fun to bring to life shows that I, I absolutely loved as a kiddo and still love today. What shows did you love? Like I am a Green Acres person. But I sometimes <laughs> turn on me TV and I'm like, let's watch Hogan's Heroes. Let's watch Gunsmoke. Like, what do you love? Oh, I love the Dick Van Dyke show. I loved Gilligan's Island. I love Bewitched. Um, you know, I I loved I Dream of Jeannie. Um, I you know I loved Taxi, and I loved you know. But there were a lot of shows that we couldn't reference because you know we were talking about a family sitcom show. So like a show like Taxi, less relevant than a show like The Brady Bunch, you know, because it really is about a family. I think we're around the same age, and so like it's. You know, it's funny because like when we were growing up, like all these shows were on all the time. So like we watched, you know, like everyone knew every episode of the Brady Bunch because like it was just on. And it makes me so sad that kids today maybe don't have that experience of this like collective knowledge of like, no, everyone knows all six Brady's or, you know, whatever. It is. Right. It's true. <laughs> yeah. There's just so much content out there as well that it, that you don't have these same pop culture touchstones and moments. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. You know, everybody knows that. Yeah, um, only knows. <laughs> One thing that I love, speaking of that, is like you'd make these not when you speak of production design, you'd make these nods to those shows like episode three, kind of Brady ish, but it's like it has the staircase, but it's going the wrong way. And it's not the you know, it's not Brady ish. Like I would kind of, I just love those like little askew moments where it's just not quite on the nose. Yeah, we weren't recreating any one show in particular and we weren't trying to parody or spoof any particular show. We wanted to authentically create our own WandaVision show. And so we used a lot of these other reference points as building blocks and inspiration. But ultimately, if you look between, you know, episodes one, two, and three, this is the same house. It's just evolving through time. Maybe it's getting renovated a little bit, but the same angle Anchor points are there, that couch, that TV, that fireplace, that staircase, and they just sort of change with the era. Yeah, he got that promotion. That's why he can get that fridge with the ice maker built in. Like, it, it all go. makes sense to me. There you go. You know, I know that you guys broke because of COVID. Like, you had to kind of shut down, and then you resumed filming, and you filmed in LA. Was that always planned? Like, what, did anything change in the time that you went away? Uh, we were always planning to come back to LA. The timing ended up being um, rather odd because we had just finished in Atlanta. We had come back to Los Angeles and we were in the middle of a short hiatus sort of pre-production period before we got ready to shoot in LA when uh, everything went into lockdown. Um, so we just continued with our plan when we were able to go back. Um, part of what we wanted to do is shoot on these um, wonderful old back lots. Um, this we shot at Warner Brothers Ranch, the, a street called Blondie Street, where all the houses are basically famous sitcom houses over time. You know, the Partridge Family and uh, Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie, all these houses are there. And it has the DNA of this classic 
television history, the sort of ghosts of TV past are walking on this street. And so I really wanted to make sure that that's where Wanda and Vision live too. And that's where their house is. And that's where we were always planning to go back and shoot. It also happens to be where I used to shoot when I was a sitcom kid actor way back in the day. I used to shoot at Warner Brothers Ranch and used to ride my skateboard up and down Blondie Street every day. I was going to ask, I mean, like there, that's something so wild. Do you know what I mean? Like that you... I don't know. It's such an interesting experience. I mean, being a fan of TV or movies or whatever and going to those sets and being like, oh, this is where MASH used to shoot. Like they made something so important to me here on this place or even or growing up in those spaces and just realizing like this is a weird, you know, I might not realize my privilege until 30 years from now. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe that I got to be on the blah, 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 you know? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's true. And I, I remember vividly as I stood there setting up shots for WandaVision, being in that exact same moment, you know, sort of trying to watch from a distance as they shot Lethal Weapon, you know, or something else on that street, you know. And, and so, yeah, it's 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 amazing to sort of realize that you're you're standing in this place where so much wonderful stuff has been made. But, you know, that's great. We'd like to, to, to take that good juju from the past and inject it into what we're doing and kind of build on it. I read in the press notes that you and Kevin Feige had lunch with Dick Van Dyke. I know you mentioned you love the show and he sort of talked to you about how they had filmed, you know, what is one thing you sort of learned from Dick Van Dyke that you really thought was interesting? He's an incredible inspiration for all of us. And for me in particular, I'm a huge fan of his. Um, And spending that afternoon talking to him was one of the highlights of my professional career, if not my life. It was incredible to, to sort of, glean whatever wisdom we could from him. But I think the one big takeaway I had was uh, if, it, if it couldn't happen in real life, it wouldn't happen on the show. And I think that's a big part of it. Grounded, these family sitcoms are always drawing on true stories of what's happening in our lives. And then that gives you permission to do crazy pratfalls over Ottomans and do whatever silliness you want to do. But as long as it's beating with a true heart, a romance, a story, a family story, that's going to make it work, you know, and that gives you permission to, to, to sort of go places with the comedy. Are you here to help us? This is our home. Then let's fight for it. 